Good morning. Y'all ready for the word or what? Are y'all ready for the word or what? Yeah. Yeah. All right, let's pray. Lord, we thank you. God, I just ask right now that um, you lead me and guide me. You know my heart is just to follow you and to see people helped by you. God, I thank you for helping me speak and helping every person here, hear. Holy Spirit, we just ask you for inspiration. Inspiration. We're not here to be entertained. We're not here for a clever message. We're here for you. We want to hear you. We want to know you better. In Jesus' awesome name. Can y'all say amen? Amen. 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 Well, hey, if anybody in the house doesn't know me, hi, my name's Stephen. I pastor here at Love Church. And again, we're glad that every single one of you are here. And for all of you online, again, hello. Um, If you're watching online, I would encourage you, tune in, okay? Um, I mean, of course, if you have to run to the bathroom, you may, but guess what? Phones are portable, so take me with you, okay? Um, That's that's a weird thought. (laughs) We're not going to go any further than that with that one. Uh, Luke 24. Uh, so this morning, if you're here, um, I would if you're here, and if this it wouldn't be a distraction to you, I would encourage you throughout the message. We're diving into some scripture today. How many of y'all are grateful for scripture? Yeah. And so we're going to be reading through some scripture this morning. And throughout here, I've kind of highlighted um, portions to emphasize them. If you would read those with me, I've got them in bold. So it says this: On the first day of the week, at early dawn, this is after Jesus had been crucified. At early dawn, they came to the tomb bringing spices which they had prepared. And they found the stone rolled away from the tomb. But when they entered, they did not find the body of the Lord Jesus. While they were perplexed about this, behold, two men suddenly stood near them in gleaming clothing. And as the women were terrified and bowed their faces to the ground, the men said to them, Why are you seeking the living one among the dead? He is not here, but he is risen. Remember how he spoke to you while he was still with you in Galilee, saying that the Son of Man must be handed over to sinful men and be crucified, and on the third day rise from the dead. He is not here. He is risen. How many know Jesus didn't stay in the tomb? Hello? Did y'all know Jesus? Jesus didn't stay in the tomb. He didn't stay in there pouting about what was done to him. He didn't stay in there hiding from what's going to hurt me next. He left the tomb. This morning, I want to encourage you, if Jesus left the tomb, so should we. Did you hear me? So should we. You've been raised for something more. Don't stay hiding in the tomb. For whatever reason, maybe you were hurt. Maybe it's comfy. It's, can I tell you something? There's a strange thing about even a depraved environment can become comfortable. And it can be a scary thing to come out from the tomb. It's dark in a tomb. Y'all ever have your eyes adjust to darkness? You're like in the darkness, and then has anybody ever flipped on a light switch? It can be kind of jarring, can't it? It's like, whoa! I didn't know light could be this bright, and what you could be tempted to do is, oh, I'll just go back in the dark. God doesn't want you back in the dark. He wants you to leave the tomb. I believe that 
There's people here and there's people we've yet to meet that we're on a certain trajectory towards death and despair. But when people come looking for us where they thought we were going to land, they're going to go, where is he? And we're not there. Ain't no epitaph, man. If people saw my life and the trajectory I was on, I'll tell you, they definitely did not think I'd be right here right now. People look at old creature grave of Stephen. Oh, they'll, they'll go to the graveyard. Where? Wait, where's Stephen? Where is he? He's not here. He left. He's been raised, seated with him, enabled to walk in the newness of life. Hello? Come out of the tomb. Come out of the tomb. Come out of the tomb. Colossians 2. And when you were dead in your wrongdoings, in the uncircumcision of your flesh, y'all ready? He made you alive together with Him, having forgiven us all our wrongdoings, having canceled the certificate of debt consisting of decrees against us, which was hostile towards us, and He has taken it out of the way, having nailed it to the cross." When he had disarmed the rulers and authorities, he made a public display of them, having triumphed over them through him. Isn't that good news, y'all? Listen, listen, like, I don't know, I don't know about you, but before I knew Jesus, he is risen meant nothing. What about we are risen because he is risen? He is risen is like a, it's like a, he is risen. And so are we. He came out of the tomb. And so are we. This is why this is such a good statement. Because it's, we're seated above every principality, power, ruler, with him in the heavenly places. Amen? Amen? We're not just, listen, something is different. Something's different. And if it ain't different, then the Spirit of God wants to change that this morning. We aren't just like everyone else. We've been born again, given new life. And guess what? The opportunity is there for literally every other single human being to do the same. But it's not going to happen if we're hiding in the tomb. Get out of there. Stop hiding. Hey, church, come out. Stop hiding. Stop just showing up for church and not living it out in your workplace. Come out of hiding. Live it. Amen? I ain't tiptoeing around y'all this morning. I love you. Let's go. I also believe that not only are people who... Um, People are going to look at where they thought we would land in death and despair and go, oh, weird, empty tomb. I think that we get to change the trajectory as we preach the gospel and encourage other peoples to say, no, 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 no. You think that's where you're destined for, but you're not. I think that we, we see people that look like their destiny is despair, the, ro the stone rolled away, hopeless to rot. And we say, no. That's not the truth. There's something better for you. This newness of life is for you. And I love, <laughs> this encourages me to come out. You know what I mean? We've been made alive together with him. He's forgiven us all our wrongdoings. Doesn't that sound like freedom? Freedom from shame. Freedom from debt. Free from all the stuff that would try to keep you in there. We're free actually free, actually raised, actually cleansed. So again, I don't think Jesus just left the tomb and was like, all right, peace, guys. He wants us to get out of the tomb, too. You know, uh, when I was reading, I couldn't help. But when I felt like when the Lord was showing me, like, hey, encourage people to come out of the tomb immediately. Where do you think my mind went? Lazarus. Anybody know the story of Lazarus? Well, if you don't, we're going to read about it here this morning. 
This is in John 11. It says this, a man was sick. So this is while Jesus, this was pre-crucifixion. A man was sick, Lazarus of Bethany, the town of Mary and her sister Martha. Y'all remember Mary and Martha? Yeah? Mary was the one who came and just sat at Jesus' feet, and Martha was in the kitchen cooking, occupying herself with busyness. Same people. This was the same Mary who massaged the Lord's feet with aromatic oils and then wiped them with her hair. It was her brother, Lazarus, who was sick. So the sisters sent word to Jesus, Master, the one you love so very much is sick. When Jesus got the message, he said, This sickness is not fatal. It will become an occasion to show God's glory by glorifying God's Son. Let's keep going. Jesus loved Martha and her sister and Lazarus, but oddly, when he heard that Lazarus was sick, he stayed on where he was for two more days. After the two days, he said to his disciples, let's go back to Judea. They said, Rabbi, you can't do that. The Jews are out to kill you, and you're going back? Jesus replied, are there not 12 hours of daylight? Anyone who walks in the daylight doesn't stumble because there's plenty of light from the sun. Walking at night, he might very well stumble because he can't see where he's going. Let's keep going. He said these things and then announced, Our friend Lazarus has fallen asleep. I'm going to wake him up. The disciples said, Master, if he's gone to sleep, he'll get a good rest and wake up feeling fine. Anybody ever just like miss it when God's trying to show you something? Well, Jesus, if he's just taking a nap, everything's fine. Nothing to worry about here. Jesus was talking about death while his disciples thought he was talking about taking a nap. Then Jesus became explicit. Lazarus died. And I am glad for your sakes that I wasn't there. You're about to be given new grounds for believing. Now let's go to him. That's when Thomas, the one called the twin, said to his companions, come along. We might as well die with him. <laughs> Don't y'all love scripture? Isn't that incredible? Come along. Might as well die with him. Just, we can go back. Let's go back one slide. I like that where we see death. How many of y'all think death seems so final? Jesus is like, yeah, he's sleeping. What I want to encourage you in this morning is that where no one else sees hope, Jesus does. And what we think is so final, what we've marked is dead, impossible. He looks at it and he goes, I just need to wake him up. I just need to wake him up. Not everything is as permanent as you think it is. I just want to encourage you. Did you forget we serve a God of the impossible? No, it's hopeless. No, it's not. No, it's not. Jesus is amazing. He looks at death. He goes, oh, he just, he's just sleeping. And the disciples are like, he's just sleeping. It's fine. I mean, maybe they could have just stopped there. Yeah, okay, let's go. I love Thomas too, you know. I mean, it's funny because you can read that. Honestly, if you look up how people read that last, that last sentence there, come along, we might as well die with him. Nobody really knows what to do with it. Like scholars don't know if it's sarcasm Scholars don't know if it's devotion. Nobody really knows what to consider it. But you know what? I appreciate that Thomas is just being real. Because they were already like, we can't go back to Judea. The Jews want to kill you. I mean, sometimes entering into the hopes that God has for people is going to seem risky. Hello? Not everything is so safe. Not everything, you know, it's... At least in my life, when I've been following God, I've realized that I have to walk. It's like the path doesn't really look shoveled. But as I go, each step is just like being shoveled in front of me. But we won't ever go if we just look at the path and go, nope, there's no clearing there. I know, should I really be talking about snow right now? Well, maybe. Hey, praise the Lord, guys. It's like 70 degrees out right now. Where we see hopelessness, he sees hope. Where we see an end, he sees a beginning. Where we see death, he sees resurrection. 
Let's keep going. When Jesus finally got there, he found Lazarus already four days dead. Bethany was near Jerusalem, only a couple miles away, and many of the Jews were visiting Martha and Mary, sympathizing with them over their brother. Now, who was out to kill Jesus? The Jews? And so now there's many Jews here with them. Okay, so again, kind of an awkward situation. Martha heard Jesus was coming and went out to meet him. Mary remained in the house. Martha said, Master, if you'd been here, my brother wouldn't have died. Even now I know that whatever you ask God, he will give you. Jesus said, your brother will be raised up. Martha replied, I know that he'll be raised up in the resurrection at the end of time. Huh. I would encourage you, don't dilute what Jesus says. Do you hear me? If Jesus says something radical, let's err on the side of impossibility. Let's err on the side of faith. Jesus, I know someday he'll be raised up. Now, again, I'm not throwing shade at Martha. We got to, we're learning from her. But he didn't say he'll be raised up someday, did he? He said he'll be raised up. Let's keep reading. You don't have to wait for the end. I am right now. Resurrection and life. The one who believes in me, even though he or she dies, will live. And everyone who lives believing in me does not ultimately die at all. Do you believe this? Yes, Master. All along I have believed you are the Messiah, the Son of God who comes into the world. Let's keep going. After saying this, she went to her sister Mary and whispered in her ear, The teacher is here and he's asking for you. The moment she heard that, she jumped up and ran out to him. Jesus had not yet entered the town, but was still at the place where Martha had met him. When her sympathizing Jewish friends saw Mary run off, they followed her, thinking she was on her way to the tomb to weep there. Mary came to where Jesus was waiting and fell at his feet, saying, Master, if only you had been here, my brother would not have died. How many know God can handle your grief? Did you know that? You don't have to tiptoe around how you express your grief to him. Here it kind of sounds like a guilt trip. Jesus, if you were here, he wouldn't have died. If you were like afraid of God's feelings, I don't think you would say that. They knew him so well. They knew him like family. And this is, what he, this is how they say that to him. It's amazing. If only you had been here, my brother would not have died. Let's keep going. When Jesus saw her sobbing and the Jews with her sobbing, y'all ready? A deep anger welled up within him. He said, where did you put him? Master, come and see, they said. Now Jesus wept. Now Jesus wept. You know, the message is one of the few translations um, that translates that he had a deep feeling of some kind is anger. And, and I was like, well, so is he just out to lunch? Why is, why is Peterson the only one that has translated um, he was stirred deeply or moved deeply within his anger? And so what did I do? I looked it up. Honey, you know, sometimes it's good to look up the language. Yes. Yeah, it's good to look up what these words mean. And when I looked it up, the word used there means to snort with anger. <laughs> I don't know if Jesus did that, you know? <laughs> it means to blame, to sternly charge, to warn, to warn. To warn threateningly to enjoin. I mean, Jesus knew who was to blame for this. Jesus knew who was to blame for this, and it wasn't him. Hello? Who's to blame for death? Who's to blame for death? Satan. Satan, the devil, yes. The thief comes to steal, kill, and destroy. Right? Jesus knows this. I mean, Jesus is upset by the workings of the enemy. How many of y'all know Jesus is upset by the workings of the enemy? Doesn't make him happy, y'all. 
He's upset. A deep anger wells within him. And I feel like that threateningly to enjoin, I feel like there's something, there's some, there's a form of anger here going on that's like, something's got to change. It's not supposed to be like this. It's not supposed to be like this. It's not supposed to be like this, fam. Did you say righteous? A righteous anger. That's what it is. It's not supposed to be like this. With a knowledge of the potential for change. With a knowledge of knowing where the attack is from. The enemy. Reading on. I told y'all we were doing a lot of reading this morning. The Jews said, look how deeply he loved him. Others among them said, well, if he loved him so much, why didn't he do something to keep him from dying? After all, he opened the eyes of a blind man. Then Jesus, the anger again welling up within him, arrived at the tomb. It was a simple cave in the hillside with a slab of stone laid against it. Jesus said, remove the stone. The sister of the dead man, Martha, said, Master, by this time there's a stench. He's been dead four days. Jesus looked her in the eye. Didn't I tell you that if you believed, you would see the glory of God? I wonder what glories we've missed because of stenches we've avoided. I wonder what glories we've missed by stenches we've avoided. Wait, 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 God. Stinky. No, no. No, no, no. Jesus, you don't get it. Don't you know, creator of heaven and earth and all things, that after four days he's going to be a little stinky? Jesus, did you make a mistake? God's not afraid of your stench. And if he's not afraid of people's stench, we shouldn't be afraid of their stenches. Did you hear me? This is really, 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 really important. We won't roll away any stones to provide opportunities for the wonderful work of God if we go, no, 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 they're hopeless. It's over. It's too smelly. People could have done that to me. <laughs> Honestly, I think there's a lot of people who are hurting like hell on earth. God wants us to roll the stone away, but we go, no, 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 they're hopeless. No, 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 I don't want to get stained. Was Jesus afraid of getting stained? Ever? Like, there's a twofold hope here this morning in this message. I hope that if you're someone who's in the tomb, and you feel worthless. You feel like there's no hope. You feel like God wants nothing to do with me. I'm too nasty. No, he sees you. And he wants to bring life to you and light to you. And he wants to set you free. He wants to have you be born again, raised from death to life. And Christians, there's a lot of us in here. We cannot be afraid. Amen. Hear me. Afraid of opinions. Afraid of lifestyles. Afraid of literal stench. Afraid of disease. We cannot be afraid. Or we will miss the glory of God. Didn't I tell you that if you believe you'll see the glories of God. <laughs> it just breaks my heart. <laughs> to think about how many times God has stirred people in the way that he stirred the Carlson family to come talk to me and love me, and we've said, no. I can't. I'm afraid of them. I don't get them. They're too dirty. They're too sinful. They're too whatever. 
How many opportunities are we missing? Right? Guys, he is risen is good news for everyone. Please don't yield to fear of stench. <laughs> and if you're afraid that Jesus is afraid of your stench, first of all, he was on a cross and everything was put upon him. Everything. He who knew no sin became sin. He's not intimidated by you. I'm too far gone. No, you're not. Try all sin, all time, times humanity. That was on him on the cross. He's not afraid of you or anything you've done. And you can actually be set free. I mean this. Have we forgotten how radical his love is? Have we forgotten how tremendous his power is? Or maybe we're just too busy. Whoa, that wasn't even... <laughs> maybe we're just too busy. Free up some life to give some life. Amen? Amen. Hmm. That's for somebody. I'm telling you, that's for somebody. If that registered with you, I want you to actually go like, yeah, maybe that's God. So if you're afraid that he's afraid of you, and, and how many of you know we have a direct example of this? Y'all remember when Jesus got down, washed some feet? I mean, of feet back then were even jankier than feet now. Some people really like feet. I'm not, a, I'm not a foot guy. You know, I'm kind of like, eh, feet, you know. But like Jesus, he's going around trying to wash people's feet. And back then, I mean, listen, they're wearing sandals. Any of y'all ever wear sandals? And they didn't have like these wondrous concrete paved roads. They were like walking in dirt. I mean, there were animals on these roads. Maybe you stepped in some doo-doo. I'm just saying, living here on planet Earth, we're stepping in some doo-doo, y'all. And you can either hide your doo-doo or you can let Jesus clean it. Right? And then we think it's like holy and humble to be like, no, 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 Lord. Not my feet. That's what Peter does. That's what Peter does. He's like, no, Lord, no, no. And Jesus is like, Peter, if you don't let me wash your feet, you can have nothing to do with me. And he's like, wash everything, Lord. Shower me in your glory, you know. But I think that that's, there's something beautiful there. Our vulnerability with God and our recognition of needing to be cleansed, like what I'm saying is, is if you're in a place of recognizing that you're dirty or depraved or whatever, you are in the best place to receive intimacy with God right now. Because if we pretend that we don't, we deny him. We need him. And that's okay. Let him wash you. Let him have your feet, even if they're stanky. Okay? <laughs> okay. <laughs> so John 11 moving on then to the others go ahead take away the stone who does he tell to roll away the stone people does Jesus just like magically roll the stone away is he like stone go how many all think he could have done that I think he probably could have done that. I mean, he's talking to fig trees and stuff. 
You know what I mean? I think you can tell a rock to do it. He's the creator of the rock. He can be like, rock, move. I think there's something powerful to recognizing that he calls people to help move stones. Church, let's be stone movers. Let's be tomb rollers. Amen? They removed the stone. Jesus raised his eyes to heaven and prayed, Father, I'm grateful that you've listened to me. I know you always do listen, but on account of this crowd standing here, I've spoken so that they might believe that you sent me. Then he shouted, Lazarus, come out. Lazarus, come out. You know, I looked up those words, Lazarus, come out. And it's not like he's just saying, get out of there. He's saying, come over here. Listen, God's heart is not just to get you out of trouble. It's to get you into life. Okay? The, 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 the title of today's message is called Hither. How many of you use the word hither regularly? Wow. <laughs> Props, you guys. That's cool. Very, very old King James of you, you know? Um, but that's what the, the come out means. It means hither. Out of there, hither, here. From thither, over, hither. That's right. I said thither. What are you going to do about it? From thither, over, hither. God doesn't just set you out of the tomb to go wherever you aimlessly want to go. How many know you will be destined to arrive back at a tomb in that case? He calls us out of the tomb towards him. Come here. Come hither. Lazarus, hither. He's saying, come here. He wants you close. Isn't that beautiful? He wants you close. Like he actually wants to be with you. He actually wants to hang out with you. He actually wants to lead your steps. He actually wants to parent you. Matthew eleven twenty eight 28 through 29. Come to me. How many of you think that sounds like hither? Hither, all who are weary and burdened, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you, or take my yoke upon you, and learn from me, for I am gentle and humble in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. You will find rest for your souls, for my yoke is comfortable. And my burden is like, how many of y'all have, <sighs> before I knew the Lord, something just didn't fit. It's like life was just like harder than it needed to be always. And I always felt like out of place. One of my favorite things about just the whole gospel is we get to enter back into what we were designed for. It feels right. It feels comfortable. Now, I'm not saying everything's going to be a, what is it, pony ride in May sunshine? Is that what they say? <laughs> Skittles and rainbows and butterflies and all that. There's going to be uncomfortable situations in this life. In this world, you have trouble. But be of good cheer. Excuse me, Jesus. Be of good cheer. I've overcome the world. Hmm, okay, so we comfy again. You know what I'm saying? Life doesn't have to be so like, ah, hither. <laughs> if you've been in that place, God bless you, and I know you're not trying to be in that place, just for the record. I know you're not like trying to be there, but hither, hither, come receive the rest that he has for your soul. Reading on. And he came out. So this is Lazarus, y'all. Jesus is like, hither. 
So what happens then, man? I mean, y'all know they used to like wrap these people up, right? Yeah. And cloths and all sorts of stuff. So Lazarus <laughs> comes forth, a cadaver wrapped from head to toe and with a kerchief. I like that, a kerchief. I don't know, this is a fun word, kerchief. <laughs> Not even a handkerchief, just a kerchief. I don't know, anyways, with a kerchief over his face. <laughs> Y'all ready? Jesus told them, unwrap him and let him loose. We're going to pull up two other translations of that. The NASB says, unbind him and let him go. And the NIV says, take off the grave clothes and let him go. Again, I find it interesting that Jesus didn't just poof, take off all of Lazarus's grave clothes. Y'all think that's interesting? I also think it's interesting that he's not like, hey, Lazarus, wiggle your way out of that one. <laughs> you know? I also think it's interesting that Jesus doesn't he himself unwrap Lazarus. You see, I've, I've heard, and I'm, I'm not judging anything. There's so many great messages that can come from portions of Scripture like this. And how many know God wants us to take our grave clothes off? But here, he's not telling Lazarus to take Lazarus' grave clothes off. He's saying, the people around you have a part to play. We haven't just been bought back into relationship with a heavenly father who cares for us, but a heavenly family who cares for us. Did you hear me? A family who has no idea what's underneath. I mean, they saw him scoot out of that tomb. But y'all, it says he's covered. I don't know what's under the hanky. That sounds really scary, doesn't it? Like, if I was one of these people, I'd be like, Jesus, come on, man. Bro, you just do it. You just, you do the hanky. You unwrap the mummy, please. I don't want to do this. <laughs> God has such an awesome sense of humor. I feel like sometimes he's just messing with us. But he's teaching us something. Amen? Amen. Again, we cannot be afraid of what's underneath. I do this with people's motives. Let me level with you. Some real talk? Maybe, maybe I'm not afraid of what's underneath there physically. But I was, I was manipulated so much as a kid, that, that when I engage with people, I'm afraid of how they're going to manipulate me. I'm afraid of that. And so I can go, I don't even want to, I don't even want to go deep with you. I don't even want to start to see who you actually are because I'm afraid of who you actually are. Guys, 2 Corinthians 5, therefore, from now on, we see no one according to the flesh. How many know God looks at us, sees who we're actually supposed to be? He sees who we actually are. He sees our God-given, fully redeemed potential. That's how he sees us. That's how we need to see each other. And we can't be afraid of the mess. We can't be afraid of the scabs. It's like, and, and of course, you know, for, for some people, maybe this is when they're newly born again. There's a lot of wrapping that needs to come off. How I many I know we wrap our arms around people when they give their life to the Lord? Hello? That's us, man. That's what we need to be doing. And not because we're the redeemers. We're vessels, amen? We're people moving on God's behalf to love and care for our people. But how many of y'all want to be the person with a piece of toilet paper on your shoe? You want to be that person? If you're walking around, listen, if I'm ever up here preaching and I got a piece of toilet paper on my shoe, I want somebody to say, hey, bro. <laughs> hey, and maybe, you know what, maybe don't even say, Stephen, there's toilet paper on your shoe. How about you come up here and take it? Yeah. What if there's, what if there's Stephen doo-doo on it? What if? What if? What if? Take it. <laughs> and I'll do the same for you. 
But what I'm saying is sometimes it's funny because we pretend that we don't help one another in that kind of way because we don't want to embarrass them. How many of y'all think that they're not going to be embarrassed regardless? What I think is we don't want to be uncomfortable and we're selfish and we're afraid of confrontation. That's what I think. And I think that whereas, or maybe we just don't even know how, God will help us. God will help us help each other. Amen, church? Amen. He is the source. I need to make this clear. The church, human beings, are not your source. It's, it's funny. I find myself meeting, thank God the church is growing. Uh, but I find myself meeting a lot of new people. Something I tell almost everybody, anybody who's taken a meeting with me recently knows this. Hi, we're going to let you down. <laughs> Straight up. I tell people that right off the top. So they're not surprised when human beings drop the ball. How I many you know human beings drop the ball? How I many you know I drop the ball? Careful, not too loud. <laughs> but I do. How many know you drop the ball? And we're called to grace and tolerance and forgiveness and love in the midst of all of it. But all of that is from him. Amen? Don't put your hope in any other person than Jesus Christ working through his body. Amen? So here's the invitation. You're invited to newness of life. Romans 6, 4 through 7. Therefore, we've been buried with him through baptism into death, so that just as Christ was raised from the dead through the glory of the Father, you ready? So we too may walk in newness of life. For if we have become united with him in the likeness of his death, certainly we shall also be in the likeness of his resurrection, knowing this, that our old self was crucified with him in order that the body of sin might be done away with so that we would no longer be slaves to sin for the one who has died is freed from sin. Anybody freed from sin in the house? Come on, who's grateful for being freed from sin? Is that it? How many of y'all are grateful to be free from sin? Come on, man. Come on. Wait, but wait, but wait, but wait. I made an oopsie. I'm not free from sin. Yes, you are. Your oopsie does not undo what Jesus did right here. Did you hear me? You're still free, man. When you lose that freedom is when you start to buy the lie that you've relapsed to an old creature. You're a new creature in Christ Jesus. Old things have passed away. All things have become new. You get to walk in the newness of life. Slavery to sin is not just the action. It's the shame. That's what slavery is. It's the, oh, I'm the scum. Hither. Romans 6, 20 through 23. This is the last portion of scripture. For when you were slaves of sin, you were free in relation to righteousness. Therefore, what benefit were you then deriving from the things of which you are now ashamed? For the outcome of those things is death. But now, having been freed from sin and enslaved to God, you derive your benefit resulting in sanctification and the outcome eternal life. For the wages of sin is death, but the gracious gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord. How many think that is good news? That is good news. So if you're here this morning, or maybe you're watching online and you're like, you know, I'm just going to try to do life without him now. I'm, maybe I'm okay. I like that it says, what benefit were you then deriving from the things of which you are now ashamed? If, if I leveled with myself back when I didn't know Jesus and someone said, real talk, how's it working out? I'd have to go, yeah, 
not good. <laughs> it's not working out. I'm full of shame. I, I'm not getting life from the things that which I'm trying to derive life from. There's something better. It's like, it's like, it's like, God's not just concerned with like cleaning your slate. He cares about you. Sin is deadly. It hurts. It kills. He took care of it because he loves you and wants life for you. Did you hear me? This is not just about right and wrong. It's about life and death. It's about health and disease. It's like real terms of hurting people. And so I just want to lead everybody here this morning. Listen, the whole work, <laughs> the whole Easter message from Good Friday to Easter Sunday is God so loved the world that he sent his only son. He who knew no sin became sin for us that we might be made the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. I've been crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I live. Yet not I, but Christ who lives in me and the life which I now live. I live by faith in the Son of God who loves me and gave his life for me. This is Easter. Real life change. Come hither and let him transform your life. Maybe come hither and be introduced to life. I just want to lead us in a prayer. And if you've never prayed this before, I don't want you to be afraid. But I do want you to recognize the great impact. God loves you. He sees you. Right now, where you are, as you are, all your stench. And he's not scared of you. He wants to set you free. And he's calling you home. I'm going to lead us in a prayer, and I'll just feed you some words. And if you'll just pray these from your heart and level with God, I believe that you can know that you will live forever with him in glory and that you get to start right here on earth living in relationship with him that your sin has been dealt with on the cross and that you can be made a new creature. So say this with me. Say, Father God, I thank you for your great love for me. Right now, I admit I make a terrible God of my own life and I refuse to do it anymore. I need a Lord. I need a Savior. And I receive you, my designer, my Father, as such. I receive the work of Jesus and therefore am freed from sin. Holy Spirit, come live in me and be real to me every day I live. In Jesus' awesome name. Can y'all say amen? amen? Come on, let's give a round of applause to anybody who prayed that in person or online. Wherever you are, whoever you are. Listen, you show up to church on Sunday like a mummy, we love you, okay? We got you. And I just want to encourage everybody here, let's carry this stuff into the earth, amen? Let's not let this just be church Sunday stuff. Let's live it. Amen. Hey, everybody. Thank you so much for listening to that message. We hope that it was a blessing to you. However you tuned in today, why don't you subscribe and maybe share with a friend? Yeah, and if you're in the area, we would love to have you join us in person Sunday mornings at 10 a.m. right here in Menominee, Wisconsin. Also, we would be honored if you would consider partnering with us financially to help make this all possible. And you can do that at wearelovechurch.com. These are great days to be alive. Thanks for tuning in today. God bless you. We love you. See ya.